Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. I'm Jim Flyzik here with Rear Admiral Day from the Coast Guard, Gil Vega from Energy, Ed Roebuck from Treasury, Eric Baumgartner from Sourcefire, David O'Berry from McAfee, and Betsy Height from HP. We're talking cybersecurity. Um, <clears throat> talk a little bit about uh, some key opportunities. We talked earlier about the fact that the government's not going to do this alone. Industry is not going to do this alone. It's going to take collaboration. Uh, where are some of those key opportunities for some collaboration across government and perhaps with industry? Rare Rare Day, what's your thoughts on that? Well, uh, say I've been the Coast Guard Cyber Command, the CIO, for uh, the last four years, and the amount of collaboration, particularly within government, uh, has just escalated at a rapid rate. It's still not where it needs to be. I have a un unique viewpoint being a DHS component and working. Uh, in that realm, but also being a DOD component under the U.S. Cyber sure. Command, uh, just even trying to watch that information exchange across uh, those two right. entities. Actually, you're sharing yourself with your, your with, your, with yourself. You yeah, know? and, and it's interesting, but it has. It's it's really improved um, over the last couple of years, where we're actually having those dialogues. And then the next piece, again, because I'm a, uh, a sector specific agency for maritime critical infrastructure watching the department start to uh, homeland security move to push that information out to those lower levels um, in the state mm -hmm. uh, local environments um, has rapidly escalated it's nowhere w where it needs to be because you have to build those uh, capabilities to do it one to share at the higher classification mm -hmm. levels and then to figure out how to take the information and bring it down into a more easily distributed and then it's with industry um, there has been numerous industry partnerships that have been established to share these threat informations and get them out there as he said in real time it's almost like we need that constant CNN news feed that everybody right. can tap into at various different channels where you can draw the information that you need for your sector. So uh, um, I think there's been improvements, uh, but there is still need for uh, uh, greater efforts in this area. Right. Uh, Gil, what do you think? I think uh, uh, the Admiral is dead on. There's, uh, we're sort of at historic levels of collaboration. Mm -hmm but there's still an awful long way to go. Um, from another sector-specific agency in the electric sector, uh, we, uh, there's a general realization now that the government has a lot to learn from our partners in industry that, are, that, that own um, the nation's critical infrastructure. So uh, strengthening the bonds with the information sharing and analysis centers across mm -hmm. uh, many industries is, uh, is a key opportunity for us to continue to learn and build our collective experience on cybersecurity and the collaboration across government. Um, it's it's at it's at historic levels as well. I think most people here would agree um, that there just aren't enough hours in the day to collaborate like we need to. Um, so there's more opportunity there. Um, and I think uh, I, I'm I'm heartened by what I hear from industry as well because I think industry is taking their um, their research and development and their technology roadmaps in exactly the right place. Uh, with few exceptions, and I think they are learning a lot from our experiences, some mm -hmm. of them bad, and uh, uh, most of them bad, I would say. <laughs> um, and, and, I'm, and I'm very excited about what, uh, progress what being made. The, the progress that's being made, mm -hmm. the future um, that, um, that we have in, in making, like I said before, making that problem smaller so that I can focus my resources on the things sure. that are most interesting to me. Sure. I think, you know, since 9-11, we've learned we went from need to know to need to share to now responsibility to share. And I think that means more and more collaboration has been taking place. Uh, Ed, anything you can add to the uh, collaboration thing? Uh, let's uh, move on. We're down. We've got about 13 minutes left. Let's talk about the future. Uh, and where we're going with this stuff down the road. You know, some, you know, you hear some prognosticators saying, oh boy, look, at, we're going to have a digital Pearl Harbor one day and uh, someone's going to take out all our networks and then we're going to have to react to that. And then others, others will say, no, that threat's not nearly uh, as pervasive as some believe. But, but anyway, let's, let's talk about your vision for the future. Um, are we going to get to a point where we're proactive enough to get out in front of these threats and prevent cyber attacks so that uh, computing would be, be able to all be able to sit down at our computer and do our thing and not really worry about that security thing. Are we ever going to get there? Or, uh, or, or what, do you, what do you see down the road with all these technologies? Let's start with our industry uh, uh, individuals from Sourcefire. Erica, you live this stuff every day, I guess, and you're thinking down the road and future and strategies. What's, what's happening down there? What's, your, what's, the, what's the crystal ball look like down there in the future for all of these issues? Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, at Sourcefire, 
we're looking to do now and in the future is provide visibility and control across that entire attack continuum that I talked about. Um, whether we'll ever be able to prevent cyber attacks entirely, <laughs> that's tough to say. Um, but I believe that we're moving uh, to a future with more control over them. And, and I think that's a good objective. This means delivering continuous capability and retrospective security. So should a file have passed through that was thought to be good or unknown initially in classification, but is later identified as malicious, this malicious file malware can be retrospectively identified and remediated regardless of where it came from. Mm -hmm. And that's leveraging cloud computing, big data analytics, and your existing infrastructure to do those kinds of things. That's going to allow us to go a long way towards controlling mm -hmm. things, hopefully. Right. So you see, and I agree with you, by the way, that some of these new technologies are not threats, they're actually opportunities to readdress holistically some of the things that we've been addressing piecemeal. There, there are about. additional tools that will allow us to do things at a lot, much larger scale. Right. Right. The more data we have, the better, the more granular we can be in, in our remediation. Right. Uh, Betsy, hi, HP, what's the future look like for you? As you look down the road, where do you see all this going? I see uh, the ability to sift through millions, if not billions, of pieces of, of data understand what is important, separate out those things that are in, uh, that need some sort of either at network speed action, meaning an automated action, or a, a, uh, a decision maker taking some sort of action in a much more intuitive way. Mm -hmm. the, th the, the piece we haven't figured out yet is how to present that information in a way that a decision maker actually knows what it means to that particular moment in time, mm -hmm. that mission, or that citizen-facing capability, or that business process, and understand the risk, the opportunities, the ability to accomplish the mission, et cetera, in an intuitive way. Mm -hmm. Today, we present information in uh, charts and numbers and figures and you just say to yourself okay it sounds good but you have to have a phd right. in computer science just right. to know what it is you need to do very with that points. information very good points we need to move uh to a much more intuitive way i think back at my time working uh with nuclear weapons in the navy and how one of the most important things that a commander had was a screen that he understood right. and he could take action on. And right. so uh, I think that's the next yeah. frontier for those of us in industry, and we need our public servants to help us understand what they need in that space. Right. I agree so with that you. collaboration is very important. Yep, I think visualization of things, I think it was Einstein that said, if I can't visualize it, I can't understand it. Don't give me all those numbers in, 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 in data. Uh, Ed Roebuck, what do you think? What's it look like down the road to you? Where's this all going? Um, so maybe this is from my years at NIST. I do think we're going to need to invest more in research to get some kind of breakthrough here. Mm -hmm. And whether it's in better visualization or better kinds of tools or what have you. Um, I do think Aramco was a wake-up call when we saw this interaction between physical and cyber actually have an effect in the real world and a very significant negative effect. That's one of the things that keeps me up at night, mm -hmm. that if something like that was far more pervasive, right. we're not all going to be able to run to Best Buy and yeah, right. <laughs> buy uh, hard disks because right. there aren't going to be any on the shelves. I worry about that. Um, I think big data is going to provide a great uh, tool to be able to do predictives in terms of if we get enough data about what our normal situation looks like, we'll be able to see and be able to predict um, things that look anomalous yeah. and be able to point us to things. Um, but also being able to understand products better in terms of are they working as intended and do they do the things they are supposed to do? And the harder one is do they not do the things they are not supposed to do? Right. And that's really hard to, right. 
to right. test. No, for. absolutely. Every one of us who has some security product on our computer still occasionally has a problem and, and you know, wonders, no, I thought that's, that sol solution was supposed to handle that, but very good points, Ed. Uh, David Barry, what do you think? What's the future look like to you? So um, I think that goes back to removing the magic, what, what looks like magic, and, and turning it into science. You know, yeah. I mean, again, uh, it's objectivity in the, in the subjective world, and I see autonomic security treating. We're all, for better or for worse, we're all part of this one digital ecosystem, this one digital organism, and yet oftentimes we, we, don't, we don't act like that. Um, and so longer term, we do have to, you know, I can, we, we call it secure configuration management 2.x or whatever, but using the standards that are out there, leveraging the products that are there to make you stronger overall almost like the human body does from an immune perspective. So take, take out as much as you can of the human interaction, uh, similar to what Betsy was talking about, as often as you can. Right. And then that gives you the time to really free up resources to do other things. But I think that'll extend also into software-defined networking, the mm -hmm. ability to actually extend TCP latency uh, windows and things like that to maybe give you some more time for that actor to be able to get involved. So um, longer term, I don't think, uh, I don't think you can beat it at the, at the speeds and feeds we're at right now without um, without giving you some additional windows, some additional correlation, a bit you know almost predictive. Right. So moving even beyond proactive to, to predictive using like the data sources that, that we all have and, and working together to do that. Right. Right. Good good points there. Very good analogies too to uh, you know drive home those points. Make, it allowed me to visualize what you were saying. Uh, Gil Vega, what do you think? What's the future look like? Uh, what's that crystal ball look like for you in terms of where this is all going? So you've heard me foot stomp on. And trying to make that problem smaller. I think the, I think the, 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 the future of incident management and response involves focusing on making that problem smaller. Uh, at DOE, I would argue that we have probably the best big data of any civilian agency, and a lot of it goes unexploited. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, right. Well, you are the we, home of the labs with those supercomputers, and they, 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 they can crunch an awful lot of data. We are flushing a lot of gold out of the sluice box, mm -hmm. and I think the future of incident response is figure out a way to smartly and efficiently exploit that information. We heard a little bit about uh, this idea of cyber fatalism. You know, uh, the mm -hmm. most advanced actors are going to figure out ways to target your employees and your information. Resiliency is the key. You've got to be able to build, continue to build upon your team's ability to understand anomalies in their environment and then deal with those anomalies in a way that you can go back to trusting your environment once you've eradicated that uh, malicious software. If you can't trust it, uh, it won't support the mission. Um, and then, uh, and then finally, um, we talked just a little bit about insider threat at mm -hmm. uh, at, at DOE. Uh, we've mm -hmm. got uh, we've got a big concern about insider threat, um, uh, as most uh, federal sure. agencies do in light of this new executive order that uh, that's come out over a year ago. And I think the 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 vision for incident response um, and self awareness of your infrastructure if done correctly and efficiently, can really um, strengthen and converge your insider threat program with your cybersecurity program. And I think that's mm -hmm. the vision for all federal agencies to be able to, 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 to converge on yeah. those two main issues. Great points, Gil. Uh, Dave, you had a comment on that? As a, as, a, as a nod to Gil and his labs, uh, one, one of our key products for that type of correlation and filtering that stuff out came out of a with deep DOE roots, yeah. so uh, I, is the, the labs, are, I want to give them a problem. They're clearly Amazing. a national, you know, national security asset uh, that uh, we need to take advantage of, and we are. Uh, Rear Admiral Day, what do you see as um, the future? What's it look like to you? Well, the future's been laid out. There's a technology element. I think we're making great strides there. Um, to develop this continuous monitoring, the situational awareness, the fact that decisions are going to have to be made at machine speed, which means that you're going to have to think about the problem sets way in advance because humans are going to put in the solution set. And this gets almost into a military kind of planning is that what is your planning environment ahead? You're going to have to think about this. But here's the piece that people forget about. Despite everything that we do in terms of the technologies we put in place, the policies we put in place, um, and all the thought we put into it, there's going to come a time when it's not available, when that network platform is not available, when our capabilities that do um, you know, help mission out 
significantly are not going to be available. And what's happened is, is we've forgotten how to do our jobs without having that platform available. So you're going to have to add that into it too, yeah. because uh, I, we, we can probably get it to 99.9, .9, but uh, you're still going to end up with that 0.1%, whether it be a Sandy rolling up the East Coast and flooding out the Verizon main right. exchange in New York, which all of our systems were connected to, which means we lost our networks despite what we could do. Um, the physical piece still Went, uh, went down. You're one cable cut away um, from losing all of the capability of the technology we put in place to prevent against a cyber sure. nexus, so we Great need to points. think about that. The other piece is, is the education piece in the workforce. All of us are competing for a very limited uh, group of people who understand, even though it still is some magic inside of this world, we need to get uh, the education systems and the personnel such that we can draw from a new talent pool. And I'm looking out there and I'm just not seeing it coming up through. So that's another piece. So bright, bright futures, um, bright um, capabilities coming along. We still need to think about the, 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 you know, the contingency piece as well as how we're going to draw that new workforce. Fantastic. Great comments. Let me try to do a quick summary here with the little bit of time we have left. Uh, we talked about progress. What uh, we, we heard that the fact that we, uh, cybersecurity is a priority and that's a good thing. It's now a priority issue. Uh, we've got better tools coming out there. We're doing a much better job with information sharing and we're doing a better job with situational awareness. Um, we do have priorities. We have those laid out by the administration, of course, but we have the trusted internet connections, which we're, we're now addressing and getting down to a manageable number. Data centers are uh, an opportunity as we do consolidation to look at holistic approaches, and we're learning as we go. We're learning uh, what works, what doesn't work, and, uh, and moving uh, forward. Good challenges are still out there, and they're big, largely around complexity and volume and technology change. Uh, insider threat now becomes uh, another uh, major issue uh, based on things that have been happening. Uh, sharing issues, uh, we're sharing more, but sharing's not easy. There's, there's challenges to sharing. And as we heard, there's no silver bullet. There's no one product you go buy that solve all these problems. On the collaboration, I think what we heard there, that collaboration is constantly increasing, getting better and better over time. Look into the future, we're dealing with billions of pieces of information, we need the analytical tools to get us down to the manageable number to identify the priorities that really require our attention. Uh, we talked about more research going on and an emphasis on the resilience factor. It's not just on security, but resilience, and as uh, Rear Admiral Day pointed out here, things are going to happen. So we're going to need contingency plans, disaster recovery plans to remember how we used to work. Uh, I guess my conclusion to that for the future is that we're getting better and better at this, but it is such a complex area that we're, it, we, it, it's going to take time if we ever get out in front of every known possibility. Uh, with that, I first want to uh, thank our panelists from taking time from their busy schedules to come share your knowledge with us and with our listening audience. Thanks to the sponsors, without which we would not have, have this show. And thanks to all the good people here at Federal News Radio who make it uh, a fun thing to do for us. And most importantly, thanks to our listening audience out there. Uh, you've been listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM.